right, all right, Aztec Nation. Welcome back to a new episode of the Sons of Montezuma podcast. Can I say that any slower, guys? Uh, I'm I'm doing very well today, guys. It's a little bit of a lazy Saturday, but uh, if you are like us and and watch that game last night, you definitely celebrated a little bit. So <laughs> it's your host, Mateo. You can find me at Mateo San Diego on Twitter. And well, gotta get my little warrior. Ah. Aztec warrior. Yeah, we are all feeling like victorious Aztec warriors today because the Aztecs take down Gonzaga, eighty-four to seventy-four. And well, we want to welcome in our two co-hosts, our uh, well resident Mister Fiend, the only one of a kind. You cannot stop him. Only hope to contain him. Fiend, how are you doing today? How how did you get? Uh, did you get? In, some good sleep today did you get some good sleep i did i got some good rest man that was such an amazing time at l smith last night for the watch party great environment great energy and a great win for the aztecs yes 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 felt like march felt like march we were all raising our our foam fingers number one foam fingers up there at l smith and uh for all you guys that were there it definitely felt like march in the building it was on fire of course, our man all the way up in East Tahoe. He went from East County to East Tahoe, and he goes hard in the paint. It is Mike Tortolot. How are you doing, Mr. Mike Tortolot? Glad I made it tonight. <laughs> Glad I was able to stay awake for this one, man. <laughs> um, but I'm glad to be back, man. What a great win last night. And uh, I'm just going to say it up front. Hey, San Diego State men's basketball team, I apologize for doubting you. That's my bad. Oh, are we going to get into that already? Good, because, you know, Mike is going to eat a little crow today. He's going to eat a little crow in this episode. I have I have no problem eating crow. I mean, you, I'm, I'm more often than not, I'm usually on the on the bubble. But like that one, I, I didn't see that coming, man. And I'm glad. I'm glad I was wrong. I really am. <laughs> we, we won't be too, too, too tough on you. Or maybe Fiend will. I don't know. We'll have to see about that. But, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm tough on him when he's wrong most of the time. So. I mean, it, he 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 says that I take all of his takes anyway. So um. <laughs> I have a spreadsheet. Uh, I'm keeping a spreadsheet. Keep, keeping his list and checking it twice for all the times <laughs> you guys battle. But there, you know, there's not too much to battle about to, today, guys. I mean, we are on on the highest of clouds. We want to thank you guys for joining us in this uh, episode. You know, we, we've been doing this for a few years now. Sons of Montezuma, we're, we're really proud of, you know, the platform we've created. And we just want to share, uh, guys, when we, I don't want to dwell too much on this, but, you know, when the pandemic came and gone, it took away one of our, you know, most prized, proud teams that we had. And so being able to watch these games with you guys and to talk basketball with you guys is such a joy. It's such like it's it's something that I don't take lightly. You know what I mean? I don't take it for granted anymore. Like being able to talk after a great win like last night. Like I've been looking forward to this all day. So, man, what an electric night last night. As we said, at Ill Smith, for all you guys who joined the watch party, it was amazing. The Aztecs win by 10. It was uh, 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 <laughs> how do you begin? How do you begin? The only thing I could say is we were looking in our last episode who was going to step up, who else was going to step up. We knew the caliber of play that Jaden Ladee had been bringing all season long. He's all American candidate, all the accolades, all the attention, all that great stuff. And we were competing with each other. OK, who who do you want to see? Who do you think is going to step up? I think it's pretty safe to say let's start at this point. I've seen it. Tweeted out there by, by P. Scott. I loved it. Darian Trammell is back. I, that's where I want to start because in that first half against Gonzaga, man, he w- he just came out and set the tone. Right, Fiend? What what did you see about Darian Trammell? Because we were talking about it last a uh, couple days before before the game. What, what did you see from Darian? Because we all saw it. These amazing shots, the amazing play. Pretty safe to say he, he's feeling good. Yeah, I mean, he, he plays the best when it's the best competition. And, you know, the, it, it, the stats back that up. I mean, when you look at, like, the teams that we played this year, if you, if you separate them out from quad three, quad two, quad one, it is amazing the difference in the effective field goal percentage that he is hitting, you know, uh, when he's playing in these games. Like quad three, he's only hitting 19.4%. That's like bottom 1% in 
college basketball. Against quad two, it's a little step up. 35.9%. It's not much better. Ninth percentile. But you get to the quad one games. You get to the big time, big showdown games. He's hitting 59.6% of his field goals. And for 91 percentile in all of Division One. I. I mean, he is just on fire in these big games. And um, I- I'm really glad that he came through. Mike. Did that just make your head spin right there? I mean, man, Fiend bringing with, with all the stats and all the Fiendalytics right off the bat, hitting us with all this stuff. I love it. I absolutely love it. You know, if you didn't pay attention to all the metrics and all those different things like like Mr. Fiend, I mean, the buckets that Darian was making, uh, he came out. It looked like he really came out, you know, of course, going against an Hart. That was the talk. That was the the storyline, right? Emhart, who was who was on uh, Creighton last year, and who got that foul on Darian to send us to the Final Four. I, I think you could see there was a lot of a lot of back and forth between them, a lot of physical play. That was so much fun to see. Mike, what did you think of of that matchup between those two guys, kind of going at it? Emhart put up he put up his you know put up some numbers. He played tough. But what did you think about what you saw from Darian? I think Darian's Darian, man. Like I, I've, I said it last year. Remember, he came to play in big games, and I've always realized. You watch him; he's a big game player. Like he's a scorer. So when he's not scoring, I don't think it. I, I don't know. Like he wasn't 100 percent until the last couple of weeks, right? And so that shoulder can affect it. I don't know mentally, physically, you know. But then all of a sudden it clicks, and he's a big game player. And, and he came out and he saved us in that first half. And I've always said that that dude's a big game player, and like. You know, he he saved us in the first half, and then Reese Waters helped us in the second half with a little bit of Jaden Ledee in there. Because, you, I mean, you can pretty much pencil in Jaden for 29. I think him and Edie are the only ones in the country that average 29, if I know, if memory serves. But, like, dude, he's he's DT12, man. Like, we got Sweet 16, <laughs> Darian Trammell, man. And, I mean, he is always just – he's a sport, dude. So, when he get, he gets one or two buckets in a row and then he just starts going, he's – it can be unstoppable. That one where he chucked it from 300 feet away or whatever it was. You know what I mean, it was wild, man. So, I mean, I'm glad he's back because once he's once he's playing well, that changes the whole dynamic of that starting five plus plus three or four. I loved one of those uh, buckets he had when he laid it up. I think it was on a, on a on an outlet pass, and I mean, dude, just looked like Isaiah Thomas going up. You know, he's he's a Obviously, he's one of our smaller wings, but he's not a flimsy dude. Like he's he's very compact muscle. He plays physical, and when he went up, I, I could have swore it was like looking at Isaiah Thomas just use his physicality as a smaller guy and and finish at the rim. Love it, that's, love it, love I it. I think I think that's the difference between him and now, him and before. I think he wasn't as assertive going into the lane because he was maybe a little nervous about that shoulder and maybe it was a little sore. But when he, you can tell he's back because he's going right to the rim when he needs to he's going right up against the, the trees you know and when he's not afraid and he's going up like that like he, he you know is he going to drive is he going to shoot it from back there he's 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 got everything in his arsenal man you know so um i could tell he was back by the way he just drove the lane against all those dudes he didn't right, guys, he wanna... wasn't, you know <laughs> yeah. yeah i want to yeah. welcome everybody welcome everybody to the chat we see all you guys in there uh larry nelson i see you what, what are we talking about here kicking kick mm, it's a family show he's kicking some a again aztecs are kicking some a again okay i got it on helica coffee i see is that coffee or tea i'm gonna say coffee because coffee is for closers and the aztecs closed it out last night okay sergio i see you DT12 in response to Mike, 15 and 15 minutes. Clutch shots kept us in that game, especially in the first half for sure. Absolutely. Okay, guys. Darian Trammell lit it up in the first half. But in that second half, it was Mr. Reese Waters. All I can say is Reese Waters is, he is that guy. He is that guy time after time when we needed a bucket in that second half i mean he lit it up drained consecutive free throws again the streak is alive they they quoted it in the game uh it's 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 pretty unbelievable to see you know this season what is he up to like 42 now maybe even more actually the streak was broken in the game yeah 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 he missed his last one yeah he Uh, talked about it after the game and the uh post game 
press conference and he was a little bummed that he because he's always chasing perfection i mean he's a guy's a perfectionist which you want because um he's a he has a relentless work ethic and so yeah he was a little bummed but hey you know what you're gonna miss he can't be perfect all season from the line i mean the fact that he's now 99.9 percent from the line is absolutely amazing I, I was talking with andy and i was like I kind of want him to just miss one just to get it out of the way, get it out of the system. Like, you've proven your point. You're an amazing free throw shooter. And he was like, I want him to hit them all against Gonzaga. Like, miss one in the conference play. <laughs> but I, I missed that one. I, I, you know, I was a little too much fun having. A little too much fun having. It was right at the end of the game. So we were all celebrating. And so okay. that's probably why you missed it. Yeah. Uh, makes sense. Makes sense. SD born and raised Reese playing like the vet and putting down those dogs absolutely absolutely mike what'd you think about mr waters he's pouring buckets out there hitting clutch threes uh what would you think about his play i i just sorry bro my earbuds are off off the fritz right now um <laughs> can you hear me can you hear me oh yeah yes. we can hear you we can hear you loud and clear Jeez. <laughs> okay. We talk about Reese Waters. Yes, sir. Yes, Sorry, sir. Bro, my see, yeah. on the what you, I need to get some new ones. But like, dude, what did he like, finish with? Twenty-two pod, points. Had the, like, when I, yeah, I like he's just legit, man. Like I see everybody's talking about, oh, he's an NBA. He's going to the NBA next year. You know, I see that kind of scuttlebutt about him, and I, I heard you guys on the pod on Wednesday talking about who's going to step up, and like everybody stepped up. Everybody stepped up at some point in the game, right? DT in the beginning, you know. uh Waters at the end. I mean, Lamont played 11 minutes and, and Saunders played 15. So you, you, that shows you how much confidence Dutch has in those guys. And he has games like this, Dutch, every year where he relies on guys off the bench and not the starters and just says, hey, this is your opportunity. Let's see what you can do. And and they typically come through for him, which you know makes him a great coach, even though he's a great coach. It adds even a little more mystique to his, his decisions. But, like, I mean, they just all played well. Like Miles Bird had a great game. Like he looks healthy and he looks confident. Miles Miles Heidi's getting more confident. So like just the fact that they're all playing well, and this is a total team effort that is just pretty impressive to go up there. I mean, what they they, they won they were like seventy seven and one in the last seventy eight games, and they've only lost thirteen times in that arena, and we're we have two of those wins. I mean, that's it. it you know, I you know I I can't say that we're um any better than them in the long run after you know, from the next 15, 20, last 15 or 20 years, but we're right head, head to head with those guys in terms of the best programs on the West coast. Well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Cause that is a question that I wanted to go over as we see Mr. J Powell slam it down emphatically and get the technical for hanging on the rim. It's all good. It is all good. Well, I wanted to bring up a, a topic and it was something I was thinking about because we were talking about, in the preview, this needed to be a total team victory, and it was. Dutch played a lot of young guys. He played Heidi, he played Bird multiple minutes. I mean, Bird had, as we heard from Dutcher in the post game, he had his best game as an Aztec. And to see that energy that Bird brings on the defensive side, hit some buckets. You know, some people kind of maybe question, oh, why are you playing certain guys so many minutes or this and that? My whole thing and I was telling Fiend last night watching the game, when Gonzaga started making that furious comeback, they started pressing us, and it was giving us fits. It was giving us problems. Of course, Lamont was on the bench with four fouls. Uh, you know, a couple other guys were, were racking up a couple fouls as well. But it really was kind of a war of attrition because the Aztecs, Coach Dutcher, in Dutch we trust. In Dutch we trust. That's a, like a perfect name for this segment because – he played his young guys all year long at the right spots, giving them the right opportunities. And last night, Gonzaga only played seven, eight guys looking on the stat sheet. But it really, they really didn't play eight guys. They played like six, seven at the most. So I was looking at Fiend and I said, you know, if they're gonna play this many guys, like it's it's not sustainable to press us as long as they did with that few guys. They're going to get completely gassed towards the end. And sure enough, Reese Waters hits a three. Then Miles Bird hits a three. And before you know it, we just start mounting that that uh, 
they're putting them to bed basically mounting our lead back up again fiend what were you thinking about when you saw them put that press on us and basically i feel like they just ran out of gas you can't beat this team with just six maybe seven guys come on now yeah, we've really had a hard time breaking the press, you know, in the last couple of years. I mean, you look back to like the Creighton game in the um, tournament where we turned it over a bunch against Arkansas. I, I don't know, you know, why we struggle so much with breaking the press. I think some of a lot of it's just self inflicted. We're putting ourselves like, you know, in a corner on the baseline. Um, the guys are not getting open to be able to, you know, get that outlet pass. And so it's a little frustrating to watch, but yeah, what happened is they, they definitely wore down there at the end and they got it, cut it to within three. But then when Reese hit that three bird hit the three, I mean, then we just pulled away and, and we sealed the deal. So um, great, great to see miles bird um, play so well. Uh, I was talking to some of the guys at the Ailsmith and, you know, bird has really struggled from three point line. I, I don't know exactly what his percentage is but it's it's not very good you know but he's so long he is such a great ball handler i just kept telling the guys i'm like man he needs to take it to the hoop just take it to the hoop young man i mean you get fouled he's a great free throw shooter and that's exactly what he did was you know he challenged them and he he attacked them and, and that's what i think matt miles bird can do really well i'm not sure that this is the year that he's going to be a great three-point shooter i think that will come like maybe next year or the year after. But this year, I think his best asset is going to be putting that ball on the floor and really attacking the rim. And it was just great to see him do that and and have some success because um, I, I think he's just a very talented player. And I'm really excited about his future with the Aztecs. It was great for him to step up in this you know big environment. Any thoughts on that, Mike, what you saw from uh, Mr. Bird? Yeah, I mean, he's just he's just getting better each game, and now that he's healthy, what what was wrong with him? His leg or something like that, right? Like a groin or something. His, so, his hip, like, I believe, is hip. Hip, yeah. I mean that the hips don't lie, right? So, so you know, if that's not working, your pelvis gets all thrown off and stuff like that, and you just can't you just can't function. So, I mean, if he's healthy now, his instincts are great. Like I just watch him, and he's got he gets in the lane, he gets in the passing lanes, and he's got great instincts. Maybe a little bit too aggressive at times, but. You could just tell, like his, he's, he's, he's just getting better each game, and and you know if he doesn't shoot a ton, fine, but like his passing, his rebounding, his steals is invaluable to this team going forward. And if he scores, you know, six seven points a game, that's that's even the cherry on top. Yeah, definitely. So, like I said, in in the end, in Dutch, we trust. You know, he's playing the guys that he sees fit at the right time. I think when we get into conference play, it's going to do wonders for these young guys like a Heidi, like a like a, a, a Mr. Bird. I think it's going to pay big dividends. And uh, that experience, they're battle tested. That's what we said coming in. They are battle tested. When you saw that crowd in, in the kennel, it didn't really do anything for me, man. You know, I, I mean, God, we got to we got to look back at some of these games they played. I mean, on the road in Grand Canyon. OK. It's such a brand that people like to knock and don't give us the credit for playing them there in Arizona. But, man, that was such a crazy atmosphere. Last night, they were battle-tested. They went in there, didn't get phased one bit. I don't care if Gonzaga students would have been there. I think we would have seen these stone-cold killers out there, these assassins out there, taking it to them. And it's great to see the young guys fall in line with that. Absolutely. Okay. All right, Angel and Angelica, I appreciate you both as a new feature. Now that we've been growing here, Sons of Montezuma on YouTube, we do have super chats available for purchase. I want to thank both of you guys, Angel. He says, Waters needs to attack the rim more. Nice layups. He is a finisher for sure. He's got such a smooth jumper that you don't mind him taking any shot he wants. <laughs> like He's got that ability. You let, let it fly wherever on the court you are. But I agree. He's an excellent finisher as well. Uh, he had a he had a few layups right up there that, that uh, were contested, and he still finished. And on Helica, I like how Ted Leitner, Uncle Teddy, closed the game with that that was a team win. Everyone mattered. Absolutely. 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 That's what we needed. That's what we needed, guys. So, yeah, if you guys uh, in the future want to get in on, on some of the conversation with the Super Chat, they are open. 
uh, open for whatever donation you guys put in. We've been doing Sons of Montezuma for, for well, how many years now? The original San Diego State Sports Talk on YouTube. So hopefully we'll have some NIL possibilities with some of the guys coming up soon. And we can get uh, get some more super chats for the young guys. Some more some more NIL opportunities. All right, guys, what do we want to talk about next? We talked about the individual play. We talked about some of the team play. I've got a question for both of you guys. And maybe some of you in the chat want to give us your opinions. Because coming into this game, Aztecs were underdogs. Gonzaga was what, number 13 in the nation? I wasn't really impressed. I really wasn't that impressed. I mean, they got some players. They absolutely do. But after beating them now, does this win, does it really officially signify San Diego State as the official West Coast basketball power? Did this win make that official, or has it been that way? Or is that not the case in your guys' mind? I know it's a big question. It's a big picture program question, but I think it's something on the minds of everybody in Aztec Nation, and it should be on everybody's mind on the West Coast. I mean, the the, the level of success they showed last night on those stats, right, were what, number three, number four? And uh, to, to beat now Gonzaga last night, a three and one overall record. We showed the 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 breakdown of the scores, and to be three and one against these guys over the the last what over the last decade or so or plus. What does that mean to you, Fiend? Do you think it's time to uh to start making our announcement that Aztecs basketball is the power on the West Coast? Well, first I want to ask you a question. I mean, do we consider oh. Arizona to be on the West Coast? <laughs> I personally do. I do, uh, as far as the Western side of basketball, right? And when I say West Coast, I'm not saying you have to act, absolutely be in California or Oregon, Washington, all that stuff. But I mean, on the Western, the Western uh, elite teams. And I would, I would say San Diego State is there. That's my personal I'm, belief. I mean, just looking at their pedigree with their history and 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 their their long-term success that they've had over the years i I mean i have to give the nod probably to arizona i mean um as much as i don't want to but they're they're ranked obviously what top five i mean they've been number one this season they have a fantastic team they actually their head coach came from gonzaga and there was a really good point that was made on the field of 68 after dark Last night, is, is Gonzaga going to be the same since Tommy Lloyd left to be the head coach at Arizona? He he was the guy who recruited a lot of these guys from Europe um, that came over and these, these, you know, a lot of these top, this top talent. And they really haven't found a replacement for him to be able to recruit those guys. And so is Gonzaga going to be able to sustain the success that they've had over the past, you know, say 10 years? Um, with some of the teams that they had that, that have been consistently in the top five and and mentioned as national championship caliber teams. And that's a big question that, that you know, I, I don't know. We'll see. But it does seem like they've kind of taken a little bit of a, a downturn. Um, and we'll see where they're ranked on, on Monday, Come you know, with the AP top 25. We better be ranked in the top 25 after getting that win. The thing is they, they still have great players. I mean, Graham E.K., Ryan Nemhart. Um, and Tom Watson. I mean, they, they have some fantastic players, and with the right matchups in the tournament, they can make a run through the tournament. But um, I right now, I mean, I, I love to say that we're the best team on the West Coast, but, I, I mean, just based on the way that they're playing, I'd have to say Arizona is right now. Okay. All right. All right. Mike, how do you stand on this? Do you agree with Fiend? We still got some – some room to go despite being in the natty last year despite all the success and and the numbers go uh at this moment where we are now do you do you still do you agree with fiend i mean regular season we're right there absolutely postseason is when it kind of gets different because obviously the success arizona's had and <clears throat> gonzaga has had even though gonzaga has won a national championship they just they They've been to the, what Sweet Sixteen eight years in a row, you know, and so you kind of you kind of have to put like an asterisk by what what you determine is successful. Yeah, it's it's us three, you know, whether it's one, two, three, depending on who you ask. 
but yeah, I mean, you know, Gonzaga has been consistent and we've been consistent and so is Arizona, but they have a little bit more success in the, in the tournament. So, you know, if, if we were going to look at that, I would probably put us, I mean, neck and neck with them, but they have a little bit of an edge because of the tournament victories and, and, and the, the, you know, the success they've had in the tournament where we have it. So, you know, once we get that up and going, yeah. But I mean, I shit, man, I play anybody anywhere. Like that's the thing. These guys, they don't, they're not afraid to play anybody anywhere. Right. Like Fiend says, I'll do a recording anytime, anywhere, any anytime you want me to get on that pod. Right. These guys will play anybody anywhere, you know? So I, I think that's the mentality they have is, Hey, let's just ball. Let's see what happens and play out. I mean, more often than not, I feel like we beat Arizona and Gonzaga in games. I'll be curious to see what our record is against Arizona. I think they probably have a little bit of an edge, but I, I, I know we've, we've taken a few. Remember Chase Tapley in that one game, and I was down at uh, whatever that was down in the Bay yeah. and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, it's it's a good interpretation. It's kind of like you know, who's the best running back of all time? Who's the best quarterback of all time? There's the, you can depends on the person answering the question, but we're right there. Yeah, we're right there. Yeah, I, I think agree in the head, with you. I think battle. top three. I think top three. Yeah. I mean, I, I would definitely put us in the top three. Absolutely, but we did get smacked in Maui last year. That's yeah. a fact. <laughs> Arizona does have have the edge on the fate on the the head to head matchup. So, okay, okay, I can live with that. I can live with that. Whew. Okay, let's get to some of these comments in the chat. Okay, <laughs> Melanie, A A Z want to be in C A. They want to be California so bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get it uh thoughts on the ranking so after this game how do you what do you guys think we're going to shake out in the ranking fiend i i we're absolutely in the top 25 i'm hopeful that maybe it'll be top 20 but it's probably going to be more like 22 okay all right just because of the Mm -hmm. east coast bias yeah yeah i mean you beat a number 13 ranked team and yeah 11 and 2 fifth toughest schedule in the nation Mm. okay all right Oh, big O. Do you guys think we really need a big man center like a Shaquille O'Neal to win it all? Um, I don't think so. Uh, I think we've proven we got some depth. The, the coach is back. He's hungry more than ever. We've got some, some crazy offensive ability on this team. And the defensive capabilities, I think, are coming around, like Coach says. I think they're getting better defensively. Do you need a Shaq? No, you don't need a Shaq. There's there aren't any other Shaqs out there. Like it's a once in a lifetime generational player. But I hear what you're saying. Do you need a big body like that dominating guy down low in the paint? Mike, what do you think? Do you think we need uh, that type of a figure, a, a big man figure, to, to win it all this year? I mean, it doesn't hurt. You know, it'd be nice to have something like that. But you got to have the right matchup in the NCAA tournaments. If you get the right matchups, like we did last year. You can see how far we go. Now, obviously, we had a different makeup of the team last year with who we had. But all you got to do, you don't have to be the best team. You just got to be the best team that night in the in the tournament, right? So you get a good matchup in the tournament, and you can go far. So, you know, unless you run up against, like, like we did with UConn last year, they were just they were just beastly, but they destroyed everybody. So um, I, I'm, I'm with this team, It's if we get the right matchup, uh, I like our chances in the tournament. All right, all right. I hope that answers your question, Big O. I know Big O was talking about the bracket he wants again this year. It's the uh, the the Southern bracket. He had a he had a certain name for that bracket, though. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say what it is. <laughs> I'm not gonna say what it is. What's up, regular James? What up, sons of Montezuma fam? Good to see you. Good to see you. Okay, Sergio Jimenez says Mountain West got better this year, so games like last night only make us better and prepares the team heading towards march i'm looking forward to conference play guys what what day do we play i think we play fresno state right coming up Wednesday. next mm-hmm. january 3rd you know january you know what 3rd. let me let me sidetrack real quick i was talking to it's gonna sound real douchey but my nanny's boyfriend <laughs> works for the athletic department up here at unr and we were given we, we kind of go back and forth and i go i go bro you're 12 and 1 but have you gotten how much better have your team actually gotten with those 13 games? Yes, you've gotten better. You beat a TCU. You won the Diamond Head Classic and stuff like that. But, I mean, how, incrementally, how much better have you gotten compared to, say, us, who was 11-2? and two, We were playing the hard-ass schedule. Like, you know, look at how we progressed as a team, all these guys, you know, getting better. 
So, you know, that's what I'm curious about in the Mountain West is, yeah, their confidence is up because they're 12-1. and one, But if you're not playing the schedule like we are and having the tight games that we've had, how are you going to react in those tight games when they come up? You know, so that that's what I'm curious. It's great that we're all – all these teams are – 12 and 1 and 11 and 2 and stuff like that. I think Colorado State's legit. I don't know about the other teams yet, you know? Um, but you saw the same thing last year, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, but you know what I'm saying? It's like you've gotten better, but how much better have you gotten to where if you have that fork in the road, which way are you going to go when adversity hits? You know, didn't didn't New Mexico win the map champ? You know, Joey Luce has that map yeah. champ that we won back yeah. in 2020, right? And like yeah. they were the undefeated team, the last undefeated team in, in college basketball. They didn't even make the tournament, right? So you don't know, like you don't know, like this is great. I mean, I, I like the fact that I'm going to get a beer from you if we get to those 24 wins that we bet on. I think we're there. I, it was it was it was nice to see after that BYU game, man. But um, but you you know that's that's what I look at is 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 what, how are these, what are these teams going to look like? You know what I mean? I don't pay as much attention to the other teams. I do a little bit to UNR just because of up here and stuff like that, but <laughs> I'll be, I'll be, I'll be fascinated to see those guys, um, which, Hey, I'm bringing that kid down for the game. He's never been to VA house. He's like, Mike, I want to go. Cause he's getting his tickets for the, the UNR game up here. And so I'm, don't give me shit. Don't give me shit about that. Cause he's going to come back <laughs> for the game. He's a good kid, but I was like, you got to come, man. So it'll be fun. You guys will get to meet him. He's a good guy. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to that. Give him, give him a little, give him a little bit of the business. Talking about giving a little bit of the business, guys. I'm really excited for this segment coming up. Fiend, we know last episode you had a uh, little encounter with a troll, and so we want to put you in the spotlight right now. <laughs> we want to give you an opportunity because, as Sergio and Angel are pointing out right now, a Mister, well, Mark from the last episode where is he where is he talking all that trash fiend give us your retort back to mr mark who's giving you the business as a troll last episode what do you got to say to mark yeah so i mean mark was uh in the chat last episode trying to bet me that if the gonzaga won i had to give him a tuggy and vice versa so what what's the tuggy <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna go into detail for that if you don't Is that like a is that like a um It's a family show. Fall fall back. Yeah, Mike, exactly. Back anyway, so um I'm willing to collect on that, but um Oh my oh my Good Lord, man. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um but no, I mean oh. these trolls, man, these trolls come into our chat and they are something else and um well, we shut them up. Obviously, they're not here anymore. So, <laughs> sayonara, Mark. Have a good uh, West Coast Conference schedule. Hope you win the West Coast Conference just for our sake because the, if you guys do better, then we do better in the metrics. So, uh, good luck to you, and sorry, you'll have to get a tugging somewhere else. Mm. <laughs> mm. Well said, well said. Very classy, very classy retort back to the trolls guys that was fun last night that was a lot a lot of fun hope you guys in the chat are enjoying this i don't know where mark is he's not he's not gonna be uh he's not gonna be making a another return visit to the kiss the rings episode here on youtube i wouldn't think so okay i got a little last topic that i think we should address so we were celebrating last night at the game there at Ale Smith. And win or lose, guys, I was my heart was full of joy. I was super, super excited, proud, happy, elated. Uh anything you think. I was just a very emotional time. I was kind of stressing out because we didn't have the speakers for the DJ. Shout out to my brother DJ Loco Levi. He had the music going last night. It was so much fun. And once the speakers got there, okay, I was good. Okay, I can relax. I can enjoy the game. But I was super, super excited and super happy and amazingly proud at San Diego State, our school, our program, our men's and women's basketball program. Because if you guys hadn't seen, they put out the release that – what day is that going to be, uh, guys? Is that going to be January uh, 17th? It's a Nevada game. 
Yeah, the Nevada game. Talking about the Nevada game. At VA House, January 17th, guys. Make sure you guys are all there. We put in, we've put in personally here at, at Sons of Montezuma uh, a lot of work and research into the three jerseys that were already retired in Aztec basketball men and women's programs, but they weren't hanging up at VA House Arena. They were retired. Oh boy, this is back in the 80s. Uh, Michael Cage, the great Michael Cage, right? Uh, Judy Porter, who we had on the show uh, this past uh, this past season, told her story, uh, which a lot of people didn't really know. Uh, I didn't really know. And that was just such a joy to meet her, share her basketball story and, and her days on the Mesa, the all-time leading scorer in basketball history, men's or women's. Like, you can't dispute that. And of course, Aztec Andy, props to Andy for doing the research on Milky Phelps, the first all-time Aztec. He won a national champion for San Diego State back in those days. Of course, it was a small college back in those days, but we're talking about the 40s. And of course, he goes on to, yeah, yeah, I see it. And then he goes on to serve, serve our country and gave up his life uh serving our country and they are gonna finally bring those jerseys back up in the rafters it was a huge huge announcement for us and uh we're, we're gonna be very excited to see those things up there hanging next to Kawhi leonard hanging next to the final four banner yes the final four banner that we earned this past season so i'm really excited about that we got the shirts saying proudly raise your banners high for sale it's been for sale for all this past year go get it and uh yeah yeah I, I i see some activity i see some activity but it's a proud day for aztec nation guys it really is not saying that you know we made anything happen but just doing the right thing honoring the right people you know honoring the legends that you should be honoring um you know i'm really proud about that and i i appreciate everybody's uh support on that checking that out and uh yeah doing the right thing doing the right thing Fiend, what do you got to say about that announcement for January 17th? I mean, it's long overdue. I am very happy that they announced that. I'm really looking, you know, really excited and looking forward to it. Um, you know, maybe we had some influence on that with some of the interviews and some of the coverage. And, you know, that's great. But the, the, the main thing is that they did the right thing and that they are finally going to raise these banners that were already retired. And they rightfully, you know, deserve to be hanging next to Kawhi Leonard. And we can finally raise our, proudly raise our banners high, all four of them. And it's going to be a great moment. I, I can't wait. I'm going to be there and uh, probably shed a tear or two. Mike, I know you felt some kind of way about Judy Porter, the great Judy Porter. Uh, she really enjoyed talking with us. Uh, I've spoken with her since the announcement. She is just incredibly excited. And and yes, on Helica, we are going to put some plans to to catch up with her. And what do you got to say, Mike? What do you got to say? I think it's rad. I think it's great, man. Like if you're a retired jersey, why aren't they up in the, why aren't they hanging? So you know you you rectify a wrong, maybe not wrong. You rectify a situation that probably should have been rectified a while back, but later is you know later is better than never, right? So. I think it's I think it's fantastic. I mean, you have the points leader, you have Michael Cage is number one, you know, first first round pick, and then Milky Phelps, you know, won a national title. So, um, I think I think it's fantastic um, that they're they're doing it, and I think it's important that you remember the past because um, you know a lot of these young people are, like I said, when the interview with Judy Porter, like you know, you're gonna have a little girl. You know, say I take my little girl, and she's like, "Who's that? Who's that number?" Well, that's Judy Porter. I could tell her about it, right? Like, I would, I would love. To, I don't, I don't. I mean, Tammy Blackburn's one that might be an under discussion because she was a fantastic basketball player, man. Like she was unbelievable. Like when I saw her, uh, when she, we had those teams when they were at Pearson Gym in the, in the in the finals and stuff like that, you know, tournament. So, I think it's long overdue, and I think it's a great, great time to do it. And I think it's, I think it's, it's fantastic. I love it more so for Judy than anything, right? Uh, of course, with Milky, it's posthumous, but you know, to do the right thing for him is is long overdue. And then with Michael Cage, I mean, dude, he was the face, the face, the name, the identity of Aztec basketball for so long. I mean, he had an amazing NBA career, not just a good NBA career, like he was 
a pillar of rebounding in the NBA on some really, really good teams that contended. So it's great to have him. I know I remember you ran into him at the Final Four, Mike. That was awesome to see. And, and you know, keep our fingers crossed. You know, we can talk with Mr. Mike Cage. He's a, but if he's, is he still in Oklahoma City? He is, man. He works for the Thunder. The Thunder. I might have to, I go to Oklahoma for business once in a while. We have to figure out maybe I can get out there and see him at some point and say hi, you know, because he was very nice. You know, he was very nice when I met him. I saw him. He's tall. I'm like, hey. What's up, man? <laughs> you know, yeah. and he said he's like, I love what you guys do, which is pretty cool. So, um, you know, I, I'm glad he got there. Hopefully, he's going to be there, um, and obviously Judy will be there. So, um, I think it's going to be great just to see what it means to them, what what they mean to us as a fan base, um, and the history on it. Definitely, definitely. Okay. <laughs> love it love it love it love the interaction guys loving it on youtube make sure you guys are sending in your comments questions concerns and your super chats are now available we really appreciate all the support we've been getting in aztec nation we hope to do more watch parties coming up uh all around the county and uh yeah 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 we gotta highlight that one we gotta highlight that one right there i mean i just hope we play gonzaga in the tournament sometime man like to get all this bullshit out of it. i mean like you guys don't you guys play in a doo-doo ass conference you won't change conferences you play in a shit conference man like you win all the time because you don't have anybody in your conference byu left you got what saint mary's come on man like that's cool that you guys do well in in, in march and i think that's great and i think you deserve the props you get but like you guys I think they need conference. to come over to the Mountain West to escape irrelevance. Yeah, they don't want it. They're afraid. That's why they don't play it. They don't play that stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, they do have uh, the the little sister in the conference, so they're they're trying trying to trying to do. Well, they've got that sweetheart deal with their conference tournament where they can get to the semifinal every year. I think pretty much. Yeah. 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 I mean, they win. Give them that. They win, but like you're winning against what JUCO teams. You know what I mean? They Tuck were Thompson. winning, Mike. Sorry, not us. That would be not against us. That's a twenty-five percent win percentage by Mark Grant against us. That's true. <laughs> head to head over the last what ten years, fifteen years, we have we have won more games against them. Mm, three and one. Three and one. Okay, guys. Another topic, and you know it's kind of a sensitive one. Kind of sensitive one. Talking about the the jerseys being retired, somebody was saying, "Okay, they're they're getting the jerseys retired that they should have." But what about Tony Gwynn? That's a name I bring up with respect. That's that's Mr. San Diego. I mean, came here, played here at State, played for the Padres, never left, turned down bigger money because he was just so in love with the community. And of course, San Diego State he coached there in the baseball team in his later years. What do you think as far as basketball though goes, guys? I mean, he holds the the assist uh, record, like you said, Mike. That's probably never going to be touched. No. Do you think that's a move that needs to happen? I think so. I mean, what he meant to the, the to the the school, like the the most rec, you know, the most assists, and then obviously he played baseball there. But like he's TG nineteen. Like I, you know, like he was San Diego as a kid growing up in San Diego. Um. I'm gonna go off track here for a minute, but like I remember, I went to one of the Padres functions before the start of the season. Now, my grand my grandfather played professional baseball, and, and he's won six World Series. So I get into a little bit more doors as a kid than other people. So we went there, and Jerry Coleman and my grandfather were good friends, and we went up to the thing to meet Tony. And Jerry's like, "Hey," and Tony looked up like, "You know who's this? It's just another guy and his grandfather, right?" And so it's like, hey, from one right fielder to another, this was my old roommate with the Yankees. And his eyes lit up. And I just sat there for 10 minutes watching my grandfather and Tony Gwynn talk about hitting. Just sit there as a 10-year-old kid, watch him hit, hit, start talking about hitting. I mean, you know, as, I, as a 44-year-old man now, looking back, I didn't realize what was going on as a 10-year-old. But you look back, you know, oh, that's, that's some cool stuff that not a lot of people get to do, right? And I, you know, I, I know I'm bragging a little bit about that, but my grandfather was my hero. I love him. But like the, what Tony Gwynn gave to the city and he never left, you know, kind of i.e. Kobe, where Kobe never left the Lakers when he could have, you know, Tony was the man, bro. So um, and his assist record is never going to be changed or never be broken. I mean, it's crazy. So after 40 years, 1982 or three or something like that. So 
Um, I think that's got to be in the discussion for the next one up there. It has to. Yeah, I mean, he could have played in the NBA. That's the thing. Yeah. He was well, he drafted. He drafted June, 9th, June 9th, 1981. He got a phone call from the Clippers and the Padres same day that he had been drafted by both organizations. Yeah. That's amazing. Both in San Diego. Both in San Diego, too. Both in San Diego. So, I mean, he could have played NBA basketball. And, you know, I mean, Michael Cage is the all-time leader in rebounds, right? right. And – He's the all-time leader in assists. So, you know, if he had chosen basketball, he could have had that amazing career. And, I mean, I think Michael Cage is, you know, part of that retirement. Well, he his his jersey was retired when he was at State, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Senior year. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and Gwen's wasn't. It wasn't retired while he was. But I think having a great NBA career helps, right? I think, like, in Kawhi's case, it helps with that retirement because you look at the whole body of work, not just their time as an Aztec. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with what you guys are saying that Gwen could be the next um, player to be retired. Obviously that was way before my generation, you know I mean? Like, you know, when I was watching Aztec basketball, so I never got to, you know, see him in person, but um, what he meant to San Diego state, both basketball, baseball, the whole city of San Diego, I could see justification for raising his uh, number up in the rafters. What, 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 I mean, if you, besides Tony, like who would you guys think would be up there would be discussion of potentially retiring their Jersey. I, I was speaking with Ken Abels and he brought up a good point that Brandon Heath, number one, yeah, He's never been worn was, since. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. And Brandon was just an absolute bucket. I mean, good lord, he was so much fun to watch in those years. And those were pivotal years. You know what I mean? Though those were early Fisher years. Those were like really landmark, turning the corner of the program years. So that could be somebody I, I would be like really, really excited for and on board to see him get honored that way. Yeah, had we had Malachi Flynn for a couple of years, I think he would be someone that would be in that conversation. Um, it wouldn't surprise me at all if someone like Nathan Mensa was in that conversation. I mean, the guy played, you know, five years for the Aztecs. I mean, had that COVID year. Um, I, I could see in this generation of players possibly him being the one. Wow. Well, what would be your criteria? I mean, what, what are you basing that on? Like the all four years, like record, record breaking numbers of some sort? Well, I mean, you know, just the rebounds, the, um, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I mean, just the impact that he had defensively on the team. I mean, we were metrically one of the best defensive teams every single year that he was on the team, you know, and we are known for our defense. So, um, he was the cornerstone of that. And so I could see how we could, you know, possibly be someone who we could. And, and the fact that we got to the national championship game. Right. And he was our best defender on that team. Um, I, I could see how that could factor into him. His jersey eventually being retired. Have much love for Nathan, man. And I'm so happy that he. <laughs> you know, got that two-way contract and recently played out here on the West Coast, played against the Clippers and the, the Lakers, and, you know, is, is playing really well, you know, yeah. given the, the, the short amount of time that he's been given uh, on the floor and uh, really hoping that he can stick in the NBA. Just such a great story. What about Skyler Spencer's zero, man, all-time blocks? All-time blocks leader, dude. Love to see that zero hanging up in the rafters. Okay, okay. Oh, regular James. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, regular James. We see you, man. Getting the uh, the super chat going. He's got a question for us, so we're going to answer that. Would you consider UNLV a rival still, guys? We're 27-3 and three the last 30, and we own Las Vegas. Hashtag go Aztecs in enemy territory man i mean you you talk about beating unlv in vegas i mean just just playing in vegas in general we like, we proved it this year winning winning the uh winning the tournament there early in the early season what, what do you guys feel about unlv mike they're fun to play they're fun to beat seems like our our team really enjoy getting up for those games too 
Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like our, our rival ch- trends to change every couple of years. You know what I mean? Like, Utah State was a rival for a couple of years when they had Sam Merrill and those guys and Quinta or whatever his name was. And then it changed, you know, uh, to a couple before. Like, I just feel like we don't – the, the rival the, – our, our rival changes every so often. We don't have, like, one where it's a good back and forth. You know, maybe BYU. I think BYU is still our rival, to be honest. But I don't, I don't know if I can consider. I mean, we spank you all the time, dude. Like that's not a rival. A rivalry is where you have good competition of equality of competition, and that's just not there right now. So, I can't, in good conscience, by the definition of rival, call that. Our rival, yeah. our rival is n- whoever is number two to us. Yeah, it changes you all the time. Here. Yeah, I agree. It changes. I mean, you know, it could be UNO. It could be. New Mexico one year, it could be Utah State one year, it could be Colorado State another year, it could be Boise State another year. But whoever's second to us, I mean, we're always at the top. I mean, I I don't care what people say about, you know, how great the teams are in the Mountain West this year. The road to the Mountain West Championship still runs through Viejas, and I firmly believe that. And so whoever's second, third, fourth, they, they can be our rivals. I'll, I'll agree with all that. I, I think UNLV still will be our rival, though, just in the sense of geography. I think culture-wise, the two cities are so close. They're so closely connected. Recruiting, we often recruit a lot of the similar backyard areas, so there's just a lot of those type of cultural fits. I think, you know, talking about conference stuff, like where you're saying, I mean, I, I think uh, I would love to be aligned with UNLV uh, if they can continue to improve their football just as the a destination fact, city. Yeah. And the fact that they rent their arena from us, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> love that. Love that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. For that. Well, the rent is due pretty soon. So we're coming up <laughs> on the first soon. Make sure you have that check ready. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Loving it. Mm. Whee! Okay, guys. All right. Well, this year the the Mountain West schedule begins. Fresno State. Oh, we got a lot of, a lot of applause over here. A lot of applause over here. Fresno State coming up very soon, and I'm ready to get into all those games. Uh, anything else you guys want to cover before we uh, get into the uh, conference schedule coming up? And wish everybody a happy New Year's. All that good stuff. This may be Hutt's last time coaching Fresno State at Viejas. Ooh, didn't they just win though? They just won. They always play us tough. I mean, it's always, <laughs> it's always a grounded out, grinded out game. I don't care what their ranking or their, you know, their net ranking or Ken Palm ranking is. I mean, their record. It's it's always gonna be a slugfest. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be ugly. It's gonna be ugly. Let's just win ugly, get the dub. That's all that matters. Um, real quick. I posted something on Twitter about the greatest win in the history of college basketball. That's a Bill Walton reference. Just so everybody knows. I'm pretty sure. I mean, come on. Like, like I understand the Kansas game and the FAU game, but like, that's, you know, when you watch Bill Walton, he's like, maybe the greatest conference in the history of civilization. That's, that's kind of like that. Bagness is like, Hey bro, come on, Kansas. I'm like, yeah, I was at Kansas. I know. Like I, I get it. So it's like, just so you know, like that's, that was my Bill Walton kind of, um, take on it you know obviously i don't you know and the other thing too is as we start building these wins is that win a top five win or a top 10 win do you know what i mean maybe that's a discussion for a different day i mean i think i think the fau game is one i think kansas in kansas is two i still think that new mexico game when we beat them the one three one with pole is is it might be three for me the electricity in that arena was unbelievable that game that was wild to win it all at the last game of the season so you know it's it's you know i think that Kawhi game when we won the first tournament game against uh i think it was temple i, I believe i can't remember who it was or, or uh colorado south colorado or colorado or something north, yeah be, north colorado yeah mm-hmm. and then obviously you gotta put alabama you gotta put alabama in there yeah and that's the thing is you start you start stacking these things i think the gonzaga game at 10 11 kind of catapult us off to where we're at now you know what i mean that's yeah. got to be up there so I mean, it was a big win up there. I mean, they're, they're tough to beat up there. I'll give them credit for that. They don't lose very often, right? I mean, it, it, you know, but the Kansas win, to me, I mean, that stat was still crazy. That was the first loss in the first game of a calendar year for Kansas at home since JFK was president. 
at that time. So that was like 60 years. That was that 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 stat was amazing to me. You know, so yeah, Kansas is, um, the, the Allen hit Allen Fieldhouse is a tough place to win. But yeah. the fact that we we beat Gonzaga by 10 points, over 10 points. I think the last time that happened like was back in like 2000. I don't know the exact year, but it was like 2007 or something like that, or 2006. Gonzaga, they, 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 they've only lost 13 of like 285 games at that arena since 2004. And the first uh, t- double digit loss since 2012, which was against Illinois, who was ranked 13th. Broke a streak of 173 home games without losing by double digits. So, you know, I mean, I think I hope they do well. I hope they do because it helps us out and stuff like that with their, their soft schedule and their conference. I think it's going to be easy for them. You know what I mean? Like always. So, um, you know, they, I hope they play well. But if they're only playing six or seven guys, you know, that that press really upset me because I was like, I see it. Remember, I mean, we it, I feel like every year there's a game where teams press and you just can't figure it out. They figured it out a lot quicker this year. I think they had like like tablets on the sideline. I was reading through Ziegler. He said that there was tablets that was like real time um, videos and stuff like that that, that Agwek was was showing the guy. And I think that helped out. Plus the fact they were t- probably tired with six guys really, you know, playing. So, but that press really bothers me, man. Like I feel like every year there's a game where we just that, that happens. Like like you said, like the Arkansas game last year. This game there was that Cal game over Thanksgiving that one year. Um, it's just one of our bugaboos, man. And you know, thankfully they figured it out quicker. Than usual, this game. Yeah, they'll figure it out. Washington, Washington, yeah. same thing. You know, so um, yeah. they'll figure it out. Well, then they figured it out much better in this game. I mean, it wasn't yep. a nail biter towards the end. They they firmly grabbed control, hit those two threes we, we mentioned, and didn't look back. I love what I see with Jay Powell, Fiend. I loved, loved, loved what I saw with Jay Powell. He's really rounding in the form, man, and his length is is becoming a problem. I think the more he gets comfortable in that defense, man. Doesn't Boy. he remind you of AG? Just like I, I hear mean, everybody he, saying that, yeah. His yeah, yeah. stats do not blow you away, but just the impact that he has on the game, his plus minus when he's on the floor. I mean, he's yeah. just he's such a smart player too. He can call out switches on defense, and um, it's just I, I, I'm so happy he's an Aztec. Yeah, that comfortability, man. It's gonna it's gonna pay off. It's gonna pay off more. Woo. Okay, guys. I think it's about that. Time. I appreciate all you guys joining us this live stream, this December 30th live stream as we reach New Year's Eve tomorrow. Want to wish all you guys a very happy and safe celebration with you and yours. Make sure you guys are safe and not putting yourself out there in any kind of danger. But we appreciate all your support, guys. All the super chats, all the all the views, the shares, support of the NIL shop, sonsamontezuma.com. If you read the banner down below. Guys, I enjoy this. I enjoy talking hoops with you guys. And it's great to see everybody con- contributing in the chat. And uh, yes, Happy New Year's, Big O. Hope to keep doing this into 2024. Enjoy another big ride in basketball history. Fiend, wish the people a Happy New Year. Hey, let's go win a natty in 2024. Happy New Year, Aztecs. Let's go. Mike, happy new year. Happy, you very soon. Yes, happy new year, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a great Christmas. Thanks for, I, I want to say thanks to Matt for my or late Christmas present. I'm not doing the shot clock questions. I appreciate that. So, <laughs> uh, but have a great, great new year. Happy new year. And, uh, you know, on to bigger, better things in 2024. Yes, yes, yes. All right, everybody. Happy new year. Let's do 2024 right. Until next time. Sonsamontezuma.com. Go Aztecs. Go Go Aztecs. Aztecs. Hey, Mark, I hope you get a DUI like Mark Few this weekend. Oh, (laughs) dang. (laughs) Just don't hurt anybody. Ouch. Ouch. See you guys.